20 years ago, I had a big idea that I believed would heal a generation of Latinos. And I knew it was big because of how it healed me. It was a typical Miami summer night. It was hot and it was disgustingly humid. <laughs> I was at a bar with a bunch of friends. There were about 10 of us sitting at this humongous rectangular table of thick wood. There was a bunch of people talking English and Spanish in the background. People were laughing, glasses were clinking. And if you were at that bar that night, you would never know that anything life-changing was happening at that table. But at that table, my life changed forever. You see, before that night happened, I felt very disconnected from my culture. I didn't feel Latino enough for my Latino family and friends, and I didn't feel American enough for the mainstream culture that I grew up in. I felt like this narrative was all my own, and it challenged me. But that night, I realized I'm not alone. This is crazy. We had so much fun at first. We were talking about how Vicks Vapor Rub was like the ultimate antidote to any of our ailments. <laughs> I remember sharing a story about how my mother held her heart when I asked her, Mom, please pack me a bologna sandwich with mustard on Wonder Bread. And she like about had a heart attack right in front of me because I was refusing the platanos mas duro that was from the night before. And everybody laughed because everybody had a story just like that. Well, the night got deeper and deeper, and by the end, I just felt so connected with everyone at that table, and I wanted to bottle that connection and share it with the world. I had an aha moment. I'm gonna make a documentary about this. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. So I left that night, I got in my Mazda 626, and I put all the windows down, and I let that warm, humid air circulate through my car as I drove south on I-95, reimagining a future for myself as a filmmaker, cultural influencer, member of People Magazine's 50 Most Fascinating People in the World. Yeah! But by the time I pulled up in my driveway in Coconut Grove, I completely talked myself out of it. I decided that I was not Latina enough to make this movie. And that little voice inside my head, she said, girl, what are you thinking? You can't make a movie. And even if you knew how to make a movie, you're not Latina enough. You don't know your culture. And by the way, in case you didn't know, your Spanish sucks. <laughs> and I believed it. And for 17 years, I held on to that like it was true. Until one day, I stepped into being good enough to make that movie. And four years later, I had a film. Thank you. Oh boy, did I have so many challenges making this film, though. A lot of emotional challenges. There's a joke in our office that's, everyone knows that the tissue box needs to be close to me because this, this film transformed me. It healed my soul. Um, but perhaps one of the biggest pieces of things that I had to overcome was making the film about my life. This idea was my creative partner's idea, and since he's been pretty successful at making films, I decided to go with it. But there's a saying in Spanish, los trapos sucios se lava en la casa. We wash our dirty laundry at home. I really, really grappled with that very thin line that I walked, considering if what I was willing to share was okay with my family and what was not okay. And what I realized was with every disclosure, with every story that I shared, I got stronger. And I felt more complete with the past that had owned me. And I received this gift called vulnerability in a way that I never could have imagined. So it took two years to make the movie. 
and I had 90 amazing conversations with children of Latino immigrants sharing their stories with me. It was unbelievable. At the very beginning of this process, though, you should know I was brand new at this. I remember I was sitting in a chair and interviewing a very well put together attorney. And I have a thing about myself. I feel like I'm never put together enough. So I really admire people that are really put together. So I'm a little intimidated. And I'm interviewing her. And the first thing that she says is, you know, I bought my first car when I was nine. <laughs> and I'm sitting there with my notes. And I'm like, OK, what in the world is she talking about? I have no idea what she's talking about. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I know what she's talking about. She translated a whole interaction with a salesman that was speaking English and her parents that were speaking Spanish. Holy moly. I remember another one of my subjects shared with me that about the age of 11, she attended every single one of her father's medical appointments and translated them all for him. He had recently had a stroke. And a third interview stood out that was very similar to this. And it was a gentleman that I was interviewing in New York City who to this day feels guilty because he remembers when he was like eight or nine years old, his parents coaching him for this conversation that they were all going to have with a future landlord. And his family really, really wanted to move out of Brooklyn. And there was something that he said wrong in that conversation because they didn't get the apartment. And to this day, he said he blames himself. Can you imagine having the weight of that on your shoulders? I considered myself the cultural translator for my mother because she actually spoke English. But my experience with her was that I translated a world that felt like entirely an inside joke. I think we can all agree that we are all cultural beings. Oftentimes when we think of culture, we think of language and we think of food. But this is not about whether Puerto Rican beans are different than Mexican beans. This is about something much, much deeper. This is about what connected me to my friends that night and completely transformed and changed my life. This is what I decided to make a film about because Latinos that are part of this group, we don't feel like we're Latino enough or American enough. We don't know which side to be loyal to and it's confusing and we feel alone. And I was sick and tired of it, and I wanted to tell people, you are not alone. This is a shared experience. So I remember there was an interview with a local newscaster. Um, and we're having this great conversation. I'm sharing about that night, and I'm sharing about my aha, and I'm sharing about my documentary. And I could tell something weird was going on, but I just kept talking. And then he stops the interview, and he says, hang on a second. I need a second. Like, I am having a moment. And I am realizing some stuff right now, and I'm totally different than I was before I walked in as to the man that I am now, and I need to tell you why. And what he proceeded to share with me was that he was remembering a moment that he had with his father when he took his father aside and he said, Papi, I'm no longer going to call you Papi, okay? I'm going to call you Dad from now on. And the reason why he did that was because his friends had been making fun of him. And what you need to know is that the word papi for Latinos is like a cultural umbilical cord that we have with our fathers. It is so sweet. And that by snipping that cord, he hurt his father. And he just realized it that very day, right there talking to me, all in the name of fitting in. I have screened this film all over the United States, from the South Bronx to students at Harvard University. I have been to Martin County, Florida at the Boys and Girls Club, all the way to San Antonio, Texas to a leadership conference. And I'm going to tell you guys that the same exact conversation is happening everywhere. The pain is so close to the surface. It's so important to have these conversations about what I call radical cultural self-awareness because there is a gift in there for all of us. And the gift is knowing that there is no shame, no shame at all in being exactly who you are, which is a member of a larger cultural constellation that is beautiful and that is brought together as one in you. I want to invite everyone here to think about the immigrants in your family and think about their children, because that's who I'm talking about. 
Think about their stories. Did they, ha did they pass on their language? Did they feel like they were forced to assimilate too soon? What is their story? Because their story, their story is your story too. Thank you.